we're going to be learning how to solve trigonometric equations, which is equations with trigonometric functions in them. But before we do that, we need to know how to undo a trigonometric function. And if you remember, the way to undo a function is to use the inverse function of that. But we only have one little problem. A function only has an inverse if it passes a horizontal line test. And if you pause and think about it, all six trigonometric functions have graphs that completely and utterly fail horizontal line tests. Okay, just look at the graph of sine. This may be the only part we did, but it kept on going over and over and over, and it was this beautiful wave. And so any horizontal line hit it infinitely many times. So what we're going to do, okay, is we're going to modify the domain so that it will pass a horizontal line test. Now, each of the six trigonometric functions is done differently. A word about notation, we use the inverse, okay, even though that's in the same place where we write squares and cubes, because there's no reason to ever write sine to the negative one power because that's just cosecant. Another symbol for these is arc sine of x. I tend to use the sine inverse notation simply because I'm lazy and it's shorter, okay? Now, every single one of these functions is only defined in two quadrants of the four, okay? And here's the pattern. Every single one of them will use quadrant one, okay? Because we like angles here. And we're gonna stop, we're gonna start at the origin and go right as far as we can without it failing a horizontal line test. So for the sine graph, I have to start at, stop at the top of this hump because if I continue past that hump, all of a sudden it will start failing a horizontal line test. And then we're gonna go to the left of the origin as far as I can so where it still passes a horizontal line test. So when we restrict the domain of sine in order to define sine inverse, this is gonna be the domain we're looking at, okay? Now, you need to know the domains for each of these, but it's not something that you have to memorize for each individual one because there's a beautiful pattern, okay? So, first of all, the domains of the inverse trig functions is the same as the ranges of the trig functions. So we had these listed in a previous table. The ranges of the inverse trig functions will be the restricted domains of the trig functions. So for sine, it was from this hump to this hump, which is minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees, okay? For cosine, because it has a different graph, going to be 0 degrees to 180 degrees. For tangent, uh, excuse me, it's minus 90 to 90. For cosecant, it's minus 90 to 90. For secant, it's 0 to 180. And for cotangent, it's 0 to 180. Now those are really hard to remember. Okay, so I have a trick. Sine is quadrants one and four. Cosine is quadrants one and two. I said one and I wrote two. Now, how do I remember this? They always include quadrant one, and then I'm gonna take one of the two adjacent quadrants to quadrant one, and the way I pick is which of them has a negative value for that trig function. So I take quadrant one, and then I say, is sine negative in quadrant two or four? It's quadrant four, so that's the one I take. Similarly, I take quadrant one, and is cosine negative in quadrant two or four? And it's two, so that's the one I'm gonna take. Now, once you know these two, you get all the rest for free, okay? Cosecant is one over sine, so it will have the same quadrants as sine. Secant is one over cosine, so it will have the same quadrants as cosine. Now, tangent is sine over cosine. The sine is on top, so it's most important. So it's gonna be the same as sine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Cosine's on top, so it's gonna be the same as cosine. Now, there's just one caveat when we do these. Thinking of these as quadrants, okay, 
Normally, when I think of quadrant four, I think of it as the angles 270 to 360. But those angles aren't in the actual range. So the caveat is, when you land in quadrant four, you will immediately subtract 360 degrees. Okay, now of course, I could have also done this entire table in radians, okay, and everything would translate the same. 